Which is a better major, mechanical or mechatronics engineering? And are there any differences between the two? This is what we'll be talking about today. But before we get started, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be an unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important that we fully understand all of the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Mechanical and mechatronics engineering are two popular branches of engineering, and I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on the wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken physics class in high school, ask yourself if you enjoyed either the mechanics or electricity and magnetism portion more. If you love mechanics but hated electricity and magnetism, and designing the mechanical parts of physical products like iPhones, cars, and airplanes sounds interesting to you, then mechanical engineering is probably a good choice. On the flip side, if you enjoy both mechanics and electricity and magnetism, and working on the design and integration of mechanical and electrical components, as well as software on a systems level to create products with intelligent and smart features, such as robots, autonomous vehicles, and 3D printers sounds cool, then mechatronics engineering is likely right for you. Again, this is just a preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either mechanical or mechatronics engineering. Now, in order to determine if mechanical or mechatronics engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what the hell is mechanical engineering? In a nutshell, it's one of the oldest and broadest branches of engineering focusing on the design, analysis, and manufacturing of mechanical systems to create products for virtually every industry, including aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy. Now moving on to mechatronics engineering. What in the world is that? It's a fairly new discipline founded in the 1970s that combines both mechanical, electrical, and software engineering to design and manufacture intelligent products featuring cutting edge technologies. As a mechatronics engineer, you will be a jack of all trades and make products smarter using things like sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers in practically any industry. For example, a mechatronics engineer can work with mechanical and electrical engineers to design the automatic parking assist system of a modern car in the automotive industry or develop microcontroller software and algorithms responsible for controlling life-saving surgical robots in the medical industry. Now that you have a high level understanding of both mechanical and mechatronics engineering, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? Remember that mechatronics engineering is a fairly new discipline, so only several schools like Northeastern University, California State University, and Vaughn College offer full-time undergrad degrees, while other schools like California Polytechnic State, San Jose State, and Northern Illinois University offer concentrations. Carnegie Mellon also has this pretty cool program where you can choose to major or minor in robotics if you've already declared a major such as computer science or engineering. You'll find that more schools like the University of Michigan, Georgia Tech, MIT, and Stanford offer master's programs in mechatronics, which is a good option to consider. Also, please keep in mind that the courses I'm about to present are what you should expect to find in a typical undergraduate mechatronics engineering curriculum, and that the curriculum will vary slightly from school to school. So as you probably can guess, both mechanical and mechatronics engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year, like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, and basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB, Python, or C++ for solving engineering problems, and an introductory design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with the elements of engineering design. 
Then there's Mechanics 1, which is Statics, covering Newton's Laws, Center of Gravity, and Analysis of Mechanical Structures and Equilibrium, as well as Mechanics 2, which is Dynamics, where everything is accelerating and you'll learn concepts like momentum, kinematics, kinetics, and energy. Both majors will have to take circus class covering both DC and AC topics like resistors, capacitors, inductors, and circuit laws, as well as a material science class that introduces how solid materials deform and fail at the microscopic level and various strengthening mechanisms. Both majors will take intro to CAD and at least two to three product design courses teaching how to design and prototype a physical product using CAD, simulation tools, microcontrollers, and various manufacturing techniques. Finally, there will be a lab-based course called Measurements and Instrumentation teaching how to design experiments involving measurements of various parameters like pressure pressure, temperature, strain, and force using mechanical and electrical transducers. You'll also learn all about data acquisition and how to analyze huge amounts of experimental data. Finally, senior capstone design class will be the culmination of your undergrad studies and involve planning and completing a project with the team to design and manufacture a product containing electrical mechanical components to solve a problem in some area of mechanical or mechatronics engineering. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as a mechanical engineering major, you should expect to take a manufacturing processes class that introduces a wide range of manufacturing operations including machining, injection molding, casting, and 3D printing. Another class is mechanics of materials that covers stress and strain, axial and shear loading, as well as beam theory. You'll also take heat transfer teaching you how to design heat exchangers and the three modes of heat transfer including conduction, convection, and radiation, as well as a thermodynamics class introducing the zero, first, and second laws of thermodynamics and concepts like entropy, enthalpy, and thermodynamic cycles. Next is fluid dynamics class where you learn all about fluid properties, the Bernoulli's and Navier-Stokes equations, pipe flow, and boundary layer analysis. You'll typically also be required to choose three to four advanced electives from a list of classes. And for any of you who are interested, this is a list of courses that we can take at my school. Now moving on to the mechatronics engineering core courses. Some computer engineering related classes you will take include essentials of computer organization, covering basic computer architecture, operating systems, compilers, CPUs, as well as arithmetic logic unit design. Computer networking and communications technology is another important class introducing technology protocols and techniques used to connect computers to other computers and hardware components and how to design and monitor computer networks. Several electrical engineering courses will also be required, such as Electronics 1, which talks about the operating characteristics of diodes, field effect transistors, bipolar junction transistors, MOS transistors, and op amps, as well as the analysis, design, and simulation of different types of circuits. Electronics 2 class is a continuation of Electronics 1 and covers advanced analog devices and circuits and their uses in the real world. Digital Logic class covers the design, analysis, and simulation of digital circuits including Boolean algebra, logic gates, as well as encoders and decoders. Then there's Linear Systems class that covers the basic theory of continuous and discrete systems, emphasizing linear time invariant systems in both the time and frequency domain. Topics you'll learn include linearity, time invariance, causality, stability, convolution, and Fourier and Laplace transforms. You'll also be required to take Control System class introducing feedback control systems under both transient and steady state conditions and how to model control systems leveraging block diagrams as well as transfer functions. A couple of advanced mechatronics courses that you will take include, of course, mechatronics class focusing on sensors, actuators, computer control systems, robotics, automation, and intelligent devices, and the role that these components play in different industries. Another important class is robotics, where you'll get a chance to construct and program a robot system. Topics you'll learn include kinematics, position and orientation, trajectories, navigation, closed loop control, obstacle detection, manipulation of objects, and motion control. We're now down to our last two courses, the first being automation, which provides an overview of important concepts such as analog, digital, input and output, as well as continuous, synchronous, and asynchronous processes and automated machinery. You'll also learn how to program a programmable logic circuit used to control manufacturing processes and create simple programs for a set of control requirements. 
Lastly, hydraulics and pneumatics class will introduce basic fluid dynamics as well as the functionality and design of pumps, motors, cylinders, and valves. So to recap, the curriculum for both mechanical and mechatronics engineering is equally challenging. We see there is a lot of overlap between the two majors in terms of the curriculum. Technically, a mechanical engineer with the necessary job training could be easily hired as a mechatronics engineer by taking several electrical and computer engineering related courses that mechatronics students take, such as essentials of computer organization, electronics, automation, as well as robotics. A mechatronics engineer could likewise easily be hired as a mechanical engineer without taking any additional courses. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in solely the design, manufacture, and assembly of mechanical components in say a Tesla Model X, iPhone, or any physical product you can think of using CAD and simulation tools? Or are you more interested in the higher level integration of these mechanical components with electrical hardware and software and how all of these pieces work together to make a product such as a surgical robot more intelligent and ergonomic. So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries of mechanical and mechatronics engineers to see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for mechanical engineers. We see that the median salary is $80,461, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $56,000 and $116,000 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap. So someone with 10 plus years experience working at Apple in California will probably be amongst the top 1% of earners. The number of jobs in 2021 was 284,900 and it's expected to see a 2% increase in jobs between 2020 and 2030 which is slightly below average compared to the overall field of engineering. Now moving on to mechatronics engineering. We see that the median salary is $89,250 while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $58,000 and $140,000 respectively. However, because mechatronics is a very new field, there is no reliable job data yet, but based on my understanding, the job growth will be a lot faster than mechanical engineering with the rise of robotics, automation, and AI, and job security will not be an issue for either discipline. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer mechanical and mechatronics engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. 36 out of the 100 companies offer related mechanical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, ExxonMobil, Microsoft, Ford, GM, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Energy Transfer, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 56 out of the wonder companies offer mechatronics engineering related jobs, including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, CVS Health, Amerisource Bergen, Costco, Cigna, AT&T, Chevron, Kroger, Ford, Verizon, General Motors, Meta Platforms, Comcast, Target, Johnson & Johnson, FedEx, Humana, Wells Fargo, Pfizer, Citigroup, PepsiCo, Intel, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, IBM, MetLife, Prudential, Albertsons, Walt Disney, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, HP, Boeing, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, AbbVie, Tesla, Charter Communications, Caterpillar, ConocoPhillips, Tyson Foods, Nike, John Deere, American Express, Stone X Group, TIAA, Oracle, Thermo Fisher, Coca-Cola, General Dynamics, CHS, USAA, Nucor, 
and Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance. So the amount of prestige you get with mechatronics engineering is just outright exceptional, while mechanical engineering is almost just as good, and there will be lots of opportunities to land a job at a big name company for both disciplines. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum for mechanical and mechatronics engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. The curriculum for both majors involves a lot of math, physics, as well as engineering design analysis and seeks to equip students with a problem-solving mindset. While mechanical engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise in product design, manufacturing, and engineering computation tools to develop products rooted in mass, motion, forces, and energy, mechatronics engineering classes focus more on developing a system level understanding of product design and encompass not only core mechanical engineering theory, but also electrical, computer, and software engineering concepts. Moving on to salary, mechatronics engineers make slightly more than mechanical engineers, but the job security that comes with both disciplines is exceptional. Finally, the prestige level of both mechanical and mechatronics engineering is both 10 out of 10 if I had to give it a score, and you will have no issues finding a job at a big name company, regardless of which one you decide to pursue. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing mechanical or mechatronics engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to design the body and white of a Tesla Cybertruck as a mechanical engineer or to develop the algorithms and features that control how the next generation intuitive surgical robots form during a surgical operation. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is this the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after several internships and full-time jobs. If this applies to you, you literally can't go wrong with either mechanical or mechatronics engineering. Both are exceptionally versatile and offer excellent job security and growth. All right guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.